So here we're in R. I'm using this on a Ubuntu Linux machine. We're going to investigate the sample mean and the sample variance. I think it's a well-known result that the sample mean and variance are independent when you're sampling from a normal distribution, but not the case from other distributions. And so I wanted to investigate that to see if we can replicate that with some simulations. To do that, we're going to create a matrix of size 100. So 100 rows and 3,000 columns and each column is going to represent another rep or another sample of 100 so we're going to take 3,000 samples of 100 and and then plot them and then look at the relationship within each first we're going to look at a chi-square distribution I picked 22 degrees of freedom and 22 because that's my favorite number so we're going to fill this matrix with chi-square 22 degrees of freedom data. Um, there's a function dim that we can look at the dimensions of the matrix which is 100 by 3000. If you want to look at pieces of it you can do it say one rows 1 through 6 columns 1 through 8. There's different ways to do that. Another uh, neat function is called head of H and it prints the first so many rows or tell but because we have 3,000 columns, head and tail would fill this screen up, so I'm not going to do it. And another function is called apply. And what that does, it goes over a, an array. In this case, it's a two-dimensional array in the matrix. And we want to apply a function to the second dimension. So this is find the mean of each column and put it in a, in a vector or a matrix. Uh, yeah, a vector. And then we're going to apply the variance over the second dimension and plot it. So this is the plot. Now let's put a regression line in there. And you can see that clearly there's a, you know, a relationship between the mean and the variance. And it's kind of interesting. The mean of a chi-squared is the degrees of freedom. So the mean is 22, which is pretty close. And the variance is 44, you know, the average variance. And so that's kind of interesting. Let's look at a summary. So let's just do a linear regression and look at the beta parameter and the test is, and it's uh, highly significant. So there's a definite relationship. Now let's look at the correlation test between the mean and the variance. There's a correlation of 0.39 here and you'll notice that this p-value is going to be the same as this p-value. Let's repeat this with a binomial distribution of size 22 and probability 0.3 and repeat, repeat. There's the matrix, the AB line or the uh, regression line and here is the linear regression summary so the slope is highly significant or if you want to look at a correlation test there's a correlation of 13% uh, and these p-values again will be the same. So we're going to Poisson and repeat here that it looks like the slope is significant and if you look at the regression summary slope of almost one it's highly significant there's a 14% uh, correlation between the sample mean and the sample variance when you're sampling from a Poisson now this is the interesting one I'll probably run this one a couple times just to illustrate this is from a normal distribution we're just gonna go standard normal and we're gonna look at these here this is the, the mean and the variance. The mean is 0, the variance is 1. So it looks like it's clustered around that. And that's the regression line. It's close to 0. It's not significant. There's a almost 0 correlation. Notice the two p-values are the same because they should be. But I want to run this a few more times just to see if we get similar results. So I'm just going to run it again. And then it repicks numbers and plots them and again the slope is not significant correlations pretty close to zero the slopes pretty co close to zero so 
There it is. I find that sort of fascinating. Hope you enjoyed this video.